I'm going to install the fourth camera, which I'm going to use an RV door security camera. So there's this light right above my RV door. And I've got to pull off this light because I've got to access the power from this light, which is going to power uh, my camera. So I'm just going to pull off the two screws, uh, lift the light cover up, and then um, access the wires that are powering that light from, from beneath. I'm going to um, cut the wires and I'm going to use my multimeter again just to confirm which is the positive and negative wire. So I'm going to twist all three positive wires together. The camera positive wire, the RV light positive wire, and the positive wire coming from the RV supplying the light. I'm going to put the, twist them together, put a terminal cap on, and then um, crimp it with the proper crimper. And we do the same thing with the negative wire, put a terminal cap on, and crimp it. I use my Dremel tool here just to create a little notch for the wire coming from the camera to pass under the frame of the light. Just uh, put that back on, use the two screws to attach the light back to the RV, and then pop the lens cap back on. I use the camera rubber base plate as a guide for my marks where I'm going to drill my holes to attach the camera to the RV. I just drill with a 1 16th inch drill, line up my camera with the rubber base plate, tuck the wire inside, and then put the three first screws in. Now the fourth screw, it was a little tough because it's being blocked by the antenna. So I had to pull the screws off of the camera, put that fourth screw in, and then reinstall the four screws that hold the camera to the base plate. I added some silicone sealant to the top of the camera mount just to make sure I didn't have any water intrusion either behind the mount or at the screw holes there. Then I attached my uh, antenna to the camera I put a little sealant above the light also. There was some sealant there before, so I just you know, resealed the light, make sure it was nice and watertight. I had Alice help me out giving the camera a test, and we are all done. I considered a couple different spots on my dash to mount my monitor. I wanted to make sure it didn't block my vision. And I came up with just mounting it right here on a part of the dash. There's a good place to uh, stick the mounting tape to. So I just um, cut back uh, part of the adhesive and mounted it right there. This is kind of a temporary place. I may end up changing this later on. I'm just going to quickly go through some of the menus on the monitor. Uh, first of all, you have to be in single screen mode to access the menu. Once you get in a menu, the first one is the volume. This is where I actually selected to uh, mute the volume. Picture button is where you can change the different picture settings of the monitor. The mirror menu lets you change the orientation of each camera and how you see it on the monitor. Very important to do this with each camera. The Q mode menu lets you select how you want your cameras displayed in multi-screen mode. The settings menu lets you select the time and date, whether you want NTSC or PAL, and auto dimming. The auto scan menu lets you select which cameras you want in auto scan and for how much time. The park line menu lets you set up whether or not you want parking guidance on your rear camera and which camera to set it up to. There's a slot in the monitor for up to a 128 gig SD card for you to create recordings of the cameras. Here you can change whether or not you want the recordings to overwrite, you can format your SD card, or you can turn the recording on and off. The play menu gives you options to play back your recordings. All my cameras came prepared to the monitor, but if you need to repair your camera to the monitor, you do it through this menu. I'm really looking forward to using this new system and seeing if it's everything that everyone says it is. So look for part two and see if we're still traveling together. I think it's going to be awesome. Now we will be testing the system as we travel north to escape the hot Florida summer, but you never know it on a day like today because we're like freezing. Yes. Do you have a camera monitoring system for your RV? Please share your experience in the comments. You can also leave a message on our Instagram and Facebook. Now, if you have any questions about the product or how I did the install, we would love to hear from you in the comments. Now, if you like this kind of content, we do lots of product reviews like this, RV DIY projects, campground tours, and full-time RV traveling experiences. Please consider subscribing to our channel by clicking this link below it would really help us out. We also will leave a link right over here for you for something for you to check out next. And remember, downsizing still makes sense.